This is the second video that I'm doing examples on for our half angle identities, chapter 5.6. So the instructions here says, find each of the following. We need to find the sine of x over two. Given that the cosine of x is negative five eighths and x is in quadrant two. So I'm gonna just mark over here that x is in Q2. How do I find out where x over 2 is? Well, I can take where x is, and we've done this before. I need to find out where x over 2 is, so I'm going to multiply everything in here by 1 half to get pi over 4 is less than x over 2 is less than pi over 2. So the quadrant that x over 2 is in, x over 2 is going to be in quadrant 1. Okay, so let's go ahead and write the formula for finding the sine of x over 2. The sine of x over 2 is going to be, since it's in quadrant 1, it's going to be positive. I'm going to take the positive version of this. It's going to be 1 minus the cosine of x over 2. They gave us the value for the cosine of x. So I'm just going to go ahead and plug that in. 1 minus a negative 5 eighths over 2. So again, we can't have a complex fraction in here. So I'm going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by 8. So I get the square root of 8 plus 5 over 16, which just gives me the square root of 13 over 4. All right, so let's move on to the next one. And that looks good. So remember when you're doing these, you not only need to know the quadrant that x is in because you have to figure out some of those values, but you need to know the quadrant that x over two is in so you, need, so you can pick the correct sign here. All right, so let's go ahead and do this. We're gonna find cosine of theta over two given that the sine of theta is negative four fifths. All right, so I know that theta, according to this inequality, Theta is going to be in Q3. Where is theta over 2 going to be in? Well, if I take 180 degrees and I divide everything by 2, I get 90 degrees is less than theta over 2 is less than 135 degrees. So I know that theta over 2 is going to be a Q2 angle. All right, so what is the formula for the cosine of theta over 2? I only have one. Theta over 2 is in Q2. Cosine's negative in Q2. So when I write this formula, I'm going to choose the negative version of it. So I have 1 plus the cosine of theta over... 2. But they didn't give me the cosine of theta. They gave me the sine of theta. So I'm going to just use sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1 to find the cosine of theta. So I get negative 4 fifths squared plus cosine squared equals 1. 16 20 fifths equals cosine squared theta. So cosine squared theta is going to be 9 25ths. Theta, remember now I'm looking at theta. Theta is in Q3, so when I take the square root, I'm going to look for the negative value. The cosine of theta is going to be negative 3 fifths. All right, so now I have a value to plug in for the cosine of theta. All right, so remember again, I can't have a complex fraction, so I'm just gonna multiply the numerator and denominator by five. 
So I get 5 minus 3 over 10, which is going to be negative radical 2 over 10, which is negative radical 1 over 5. So I'm going to split that up, radical 1 over radical 5, and I'm going to rationalize that to get negative radical 5 over 5. So that is the cosine of theta over 2. Okay, so now we're going to move on and do the next one. It says find the cosine of x over 2. Given that the cotangent is negative 3, cotangent of x is negative 3, and x is in, it says x is in q2. So where is x over 2 located? Well, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to multiply this inequality by a half. And we're going to get pi over 4 is less than x over 2 is less than pi over 2. So x over 2 is in quadrant 1. Okay, so let's write the formula for what we have here. I know that the cosine of x over 2, x over 2 is in quadrant 1, so I'm going to pick the positive version. 1 plus the cosine of x all over 2. Well, they didn't give me the cosine of x. They gave me the cotangent of x. Well, I know that tangent is the reciprocal of one of um, cotangent. So I know that we're going to get, for tangent, negative 1 over 3. So now I'm going to use my tangent squared plus 1 equals secant squared to solve. So I have negative 1 third squared plus 1 equals secant squared. So I have 1 ninth plus 1 equals secant squared. So that's going to be 10 ninths equals secant squared. So I know that x is in q2 secant is going to be negative, so when I take the square root, I'm going to get negative radical 10 over 3 for my secant. But I don't want secant, I want cosine, so the cosine of x, when I finally do rationalize it, it's going to be negative 3 radical 10 over 10. So I'm going to put that into my formula here, 1 plus negative 3 radical 10 over 10, divide by 2. And then to get rid of my complex fraction, I am going to multiply by 10 over 10. So I end up with 10 minus 3 radical 10 over 2. But I'm really still not done. I still have to rationalize. All right, and this really should have been a 20. Okay, so when I rationalize, um, I'm going to have, let's split this up into two radicals. Radical 20 can be reduced. Oops, I broke it up into two radicals. So radical. 20 can be reduced to 2 radical 5. So now I'm going to multiply by radical 5 over radical 5. So that just multiplies this whole top by 5. So I get 50 minus 15 radical 10 all over, well, 5 times 2 is 10. So that's going to be my final answer. Okay, let's do one more of these, and oh, two more of these, and then I think we're going to move on to the next type of problem. All right, so cotangent of theta over 2, we need to find this. Well, the cotangent, remember, is the reciprocal of tangent, so I can use any of my um, reciprocal formulas um, for a tangent that I want to. So if I take a look at, let's see, 
Um, if I take a look at, hmm, I could use the first one because I only need cosine. I could use the second one, but then I have to find sine and cosine. I could use the third one, but then I have to find sine and cosine. Well, let's just get started and see what, what we decide to do. So I know theta, theta is going to be in Q2. Where is theta over two gonna be? Theta over two, so I'm gonna multiply everything by a half to get theta over two. Theta over two is gonna be in Q1. All right, so now let's go ahead and move forward with solving this. For any of the formulas, I know I have to have cosine. So let's go ahead and solve for the cosine of theta. I have to have a cosine of a, or cosine of theta in this case. So let's write our formula down. Which one do you wanna use? I say we go ahead and let's use one where we don't have to figure, well, the sine is really easy. Let's use the first one. So if I use the first one, um, cotangent is going to be the reciprocal of our tangent function. So my formula is gonna be the reciprocal of the tangent function. And since theta over two is in Q1, I'm gonna pick the positive version. So the reciprocal of this is one plus the cosine of theta over one minus the cosine of theta. So let's find the cosine of theta. Given that we have the tangent of theta, let's use tangent squared of theta plus one equals secant squared of theta. So we have negative radical three, seven over three squared plus one equals the secant squared of theta. So we get seven over nine plus one equals the secant squared of theta, which means we have 16 ninths equals secant squared of theta. And remember theta is in Q2, so this is gonna be the negative version. So my secant of theta is gonna be negative four thirds, which means my cosine of theta is gonna be negative three fourths. So I'm gonna plug in negative three fourths into here. And one minus negative three fourths. And again, I don't want complex fractions, so I'm gonna multiply by four over four. So I'm gonna get four minus three over four plus three, which is gonna be the square root of one over the square root of seven. So then I'm gonna rationalize to get rid of the square root in my denominator to get the square root of seven over seven. All right, so let's move to our last example in this section. So we need to find the sine of x, given that the cosine of two x equals two thirds, and x is in quadrant um, two. So we know what quadrant x is, quadrant three. Um, we know what quadrant x is in already. So we have um, the sine of x, right? X is equal to the sine of what over two, since we're using our half angle identities, and they did give us the cosine of two x and not just x over two. So we need to set up and solve for what a is gonna be. A is gonna be two x. So in our formula, we're gonna have the sine of two x over two. A is gonna be two x, so our formula should look like, since x, this is a Q3 angle, sine is gonna be negative. I'm gonna pick the negative version. This is one minus the cosine of two x over two. So now I just have to plug in my value for the cosine of two x and get rid of my complex fraction part to give me three minus two over six, negative radical one over radical six, 
And when I'm done, I get negative radical 6 over 6.